radio station and you can listen to all the cowbells as we're headed back into the football season particularly there at msu and the magnolia state the cowboy is part of our culture it dates back nearly 100 years at mississippi state university especially at those home football games nobody knows that more than terry likes he's the department head and professor of the department of communication at mississippi state university and he brought to life cowboy cowboy cowbell culture small instrument big impact so welcome dr likes well, it's great to be on the program. Thank you so much for having me. Well, I love this idea because I am not a huge, like, uh, one way or the other sort of fan. I'm just Team Mississippi. But I can appreciate the different, I guess, um, things that people love about their particular teams. And the Cowbell is definitely one that fits in for those at Mississippi State. So what was the inspiration behind bringing this audio documentary, um, Cowbell Culture, to life? Well, and as you allude to, you don't have to be a sports fan in order to go to the game and have a good time because whether you're going to one of the in-state schools, I think they all do a great job in trying to get all fans involved and to have enjoy the atmosphere. But my inspiration really was I worked in the media for several years full-time, and when an academic job came open and what I'm currently doing at Mississippi State in a leadership role but also still in the classroom is I vowed to stay current in my media pursuits by producing in-depth reports, some of them serious in nature, and some were fun, like this piece on the cowbell culture here at Mississippi State. You know, when people in Mississippi think of the cowbell, they think of Mississippi State. And those outside the state may think of a bell cow because they don't know the traditions here. But on the flip side, the cowbell is also a musical instrument that has been used by many popular bands. And so being new to Mississippi State back in 2019 and loving football and all things SEC sports, it was great to see this tradition for the first time in person. But as I was headed to my first game, I wondered, how loud does it get at the stadium when 60,000 people are ringing cowbells? And while it is loud, it's not deafening. I've had many people ask if they need to wear earplugs, and I said no. So being at the games, having a media background and a love of classic rock music, I noticed that certain songs were played during the timeouts, and it made it a fun experience. It, but it made me think of other songs, some that had cowbells, and some that weren't played at the stadium. And that kind of prompted me to think what other songs could be played. I thought I would tell the PA announcers and those who played the music, but then I thought of this, you know, cowbells are part of the tradition here. And many fans may have one of those moments where they maybe didn't realize, but they would say something like, I had forgotten they used the cowbell so prominently in a song, such as like what you just played, Blue Oyster Cult's Don't Fear the Reaper, or Mountain's Mississippi Queen, which is a, a frequent one they play here. But there are other songs like Honky Tonk Women of the Rolling Stones or Good Times, Bad Times by Led Zeppelin. Even Steve Azar, your colleague who's referenced in the report, says we're an American band by Grand Funk Railroad is his favorite song that uses the cowbell. And aside from ringing the cowbell at a state game, that's his most fond use or memory of a cowbell being used. Which I think you don't even have to be a football fan to sort of have a, have an association, as you said, Terry, with cowbells to Mississippi State. Do you happen to know in your report, like I know there's myths and there's legends how the cowbells got connected to, you know, state and state games. Is there a clear sort of cut, you know, how it happened? It's a good question. And there are some conflicting reports, but the most unique and certainly most resounding symbol of the university is the cowbell. And I've heard Dr. Mark Keenum, the university president, several times talk about the history of the university as well as the cowbell. And it really became popular I guess well-known back in the 1930s between, of course, a state game versus our arch-rival Ole Miss, and a cow actually wandered onto the playing field, and Mississippi State apparently was losing at that time, but after they got the cow off the field, as you can imagine only in a good story, the state turned it around and won the football game. And so the lore has it that the students immediately adopted the cow as a good luck charm. And for several years, those students would bring a cow to the football game until it was eventually discontinued and they started just to bring a cow's bell to the game. 
Well, as time went on in the cowbells in the 50s and 60s grew and became a special symbol of the university, and the fans would ring them at the games. But in the mid-1970s, the SEC adopted a rule against noisemakers. And so for roughly 36 years, there were no cowbells at the games unless someone just happened to sneak one in. But that ban was overturned in 2010 if the fans at the stadium would do what the university affectionately calls now ring responsibly. And what that means is you can ring your cowbells after a play, you can ring before the game, after the game, but as soon as the opposing team breaks the huddle and the quarterback either goes up to the line of the scrimmage or starts to call the play in a shotgun formation, the fans need to stop ringing their cowbells. And there's even on the two large video boards within the stadium, they'll put up a graphic on occasion and it will say, rest your bell, just yell. And the fans will honor that SEC ruling by putting their cowbells down and just yelling as the play continues on the field. Well, I think, hey, kudos to the state fans, though, to be respectful of that. I think that shows that they actually have a love and affection for the cowbell. They don't want to screw it up, right? They want it to stay part of their uh, their game. And it's definitely become part of the culture outside of Mississippi, outside of Starkville. I mean, it made it all, all the way to the Saturday Night Live skit. How did that happen, Terry? Well, it's it's so interesting because everyone knows Saturday Night Live and the different eras of SNL, but back in the year 2000, Will Ferrell, along with Jimmy Fallon and others, Will Ferrell wrote a sketch uh, for one of the Saturday Night Live episodes in which he and Jimmy Fallon and others were in a rock band, and it was they were playing the characters of the rock band Blue Oyster Cult. And Ferrell's role in the band was to play the cowbell as they rehearsed the song, Don't Fear the Reaper. And that was a popular song back in the 1970s and still very popular today. And, of course, they play it in Davis Wade Stadium. Farrell wanted to play the cowbell so loudly as they kind of did a mock recreation of this song, and the band started to object. But they brought in the producer, Bruce Dickinson, who was played by actor Christopher Walken, and Walken said, i got to have more cowbell. And the crowd just erupted in the SNL studios, and the sketch became, by some sources, one of SNL's top ten all time. So after that time, of course, with it being a cowbell, Mississippi State fans adopted that sketch. It's played on the video board minutes before kickoff at each home football game. The crowd even chimes in with the words as the actor says, guess what, I got a fever, and the only prescription is more cowbell, and the cowbell sounds just fill the stadium. It's really a fun way to get the crowd fired up before kickoff. Is there any other uh, team in the SEC, Terry, that has a, I guess, a a, like a cow, I know not a cowbell, but has a noise maker that's so deeply ingrained in their in their school's culture. There have been, according to my sources when I was producing this report, other professional teams, even a few other colleges that have tried noisemakers, but not on the sustained level that Mississippi State has for all of these years. And, of course, most teams have some sort of song that they've adopted, such as if you go to Neyland Stadium in Knoxville and they're going to play the song Rocky Top over and over again, and some people love that and some people would call that annoying, much like if you're at a Mississippi State game, people might love the cowbells, and opponents might just despise the cowbells and think that it's annoying. But I don't know of others that have used the cowbell or noisemakers to this extent for such a long period of time. Terry, I know you've got a lot of people curious about where they can read the report or listen to the report. I know there's audio, too. So how do we get it? Where do we go? Yeah, it's an audio documentary, and it's not that long. It's just over six minutes. But it can be. you can find it on YouTube if you want to uh, merely type in cowbell culture, small instrument, big impact, and you'll find it there. In the Golden Triangle area, the campus radio station, 91.1 FM, will air it within their 5 p.m. newscast on August 28th and August 31st, which is timed the week before the home opener before we take on southeast Louisiana. So kind of getting people aware and fired up again before the big home opener. 
Well, I think it's really cool. Something else for us to be proud of. I know some Ole Miss fans are probably like, ah, right now. But at the same time, I think it's what makes that goes to show that Mississippians really do have their own unique culture, their own unique stamp on how they, you know, love and get engaged with their uh, with their teams of choice. And how cool is it that we kind of stand out in that way with the cowbell? So I think it's neat. Thank you, Terry. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much, and I hope everyone enjoys the football season. And for those who are state fans, ring their cowbells with pride. Absolutely. All right, you guys stick with us. We're going to wrap up good things coming up next.